bump bum bump bum ball. Okay. Uh, what we're going to be looking at here is the AP Physics C electricity and magnetism test from 2003, uh, specifically question number two. Um, in this question, we are going to be looking at uh, RC circuits, so that's a resistor and a capacitor. Um, and let's just kind of dive into this one, uh, see where we go. So in a lab, uh, we connect a resistor and a cap capacitor with unknown values in series with a battery uh, with an EMF of 12 volts. Uh, we include a switch in the circuit, so we can turn it on and off. Um, when the switch is closed at time equals zero, so our initial time, uh, the circuit's now completed. And you measure the current through the resistor as a function of time as plotted below. And we see this wonderful graph here, a nice decay. Um, a data fitting program finds that the current decays according to the equation I of t equals epsilon over r times e to the minus t over 4. Okay. Um, using common symbols for the battery, the resistor, and the capacitor, uh, and the switch, draw the circuit that you constructed, um, show the circuit before the switch is closed, and include whatever other devices you need to measure the current through the resistor to obtain the above plot. Label each component in your diagram. Wow. Okay, so that's a, a lot of stuff they're asking there, but if we kind of read from up in the beginning um, and then carry that down here, um, we're in series with these things, and it's a resistor, a cap, and a battery, and then we just need to measure a current. So for a battery, resistor, and a cap, and the switch, um, all we're drawing here is let's just get ourselves a battery. So that's our negative and that's our positive side. Um, we've got a resistor. There's our resistor. Um, we could put the switch kind of anywhere we want. We could put the capacitor and then the switch. We could do the switch and the capacitor. These are all in series, so it doesn't matter the order you do them in. So uh, here's our switch. Boop. And then shh, there's a cap. And then uh, if we want to measure a current through this system, well, we know the current through a series circuit is the same everywhere, but that current needs to be measured in line. It needs to be measured in the series. So we actually need to throw our amp meter just in there somewhere, it doesn't matter where, um, which we'll do this now. So this circuit is showing indeed before the switch is closed because it's open right there. Um, let's just label everything. Uh, oops. Here is our battery. Here's our resistor. Here's the switch. Here is the capacitor. And here is uh, an amp meter. So it's a nice little diagram, just seeing what you can plot. Um, oh, this was a fun one. Having obtained the curve shown above, so that's the curve up here, um, what's the value of the resistor that we placed in the circuit? Ooh, ooh, this is a tough one. Okay, well, let's say we close the switch. Boink, we close the switch. This is an initially uncharged capacitor. So when we close the switch, an uncharged capacitor is going to act like a wire. It's going to just act as a free-flowing wire um, with no resistance in our circuit. So when we initially close the switch, what it kind of looks like we have, it kind of looks like we just have a battery and a resistor, okay, with an amp meter kind of tucked in there. That's what it looks like from the circuit's perspective. It doesn't see the capacitor. So what we know at time equals zero, we know at time equals zero right here that our current is about 0.1. Because remember, this y-axis here is the current as a function of time. So we know at the very beginning the current equals 0.1 amp. We also know at the very beginning that the voltage or the EMF we have in the system that's equal to 12 volts. Well, if I've got an EMF and I've got a current, finding R is straight up into Ohm's law. Um, we can simply say V equals IR. That's classic Ohm's law. Solving for R, we can say R equals uh, 
the voltage, 12 volts, over the current. Um, is this 0.1 or is this 0.01? Ooh, it's 0 0.01. Ah, careful. Make sure your numbers are right. 0 0.01. 0 0.01 amps. Uh, 12 divided by 0 0.01 is 1,200 ohms. Cool. That was easy. Okay, so we can box that sucker. Feel good about that. Not too bad. That's the most straightforward way to do that. Uh, what capacitance did you insert in the circuit to get the result above? Ooh. So what we should recognize from an RC circuit is that this graph here, and they mentioned this here, it's an exponential decay. Um, so it's decaying by half in some amount of time. It's very similar to a half-life equation if you're doing nuclear um, or anything in calculus if you're learning it there. Um, and it's really sitting right here. Uh, if we just kind of look at this real quick, this e to the minus, that's how you know it's a decay, it's a minus quantity, some amount of time divided by 4. Well, this denominator in the exponent here, uh, traditionally in physics, whenever you start to look at a lot of these, these denominators in the, num <laughs> the denominators in the exponents have special meanings. And for an RC circuit, we would normally write this in general as T over tau where this tau is the amount of time it takes to reduce that value of the current or the charge or the number of particles for nuclear by half. Um, that is a time there. So what we could say is in looking at this, we go from about 0.1 to 0.5 in around four seconds and we have a four actually right there. This tau for an RC circuit we know that this tau for an RC circuit here, that's not a vector, it's a time. That value is RC, okay? So that time constant is a resistance times a capacitance. So since we know what the time constant is for, we can say that since tau equals RC, we know that four equals the resistor, 1200, times some capacitance, C. And, well, that's really straightforward now, isn't it? Um, we just take uh, four seconds divided by 1,200 ohms. That's going to give us, well, it's kind of like a third, but much, much smaller. Um, it's like 0.3, but with some extra zeros there. Uh, if we worked it all out, we could see that it's 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus third and then our units of capacitance are farads. So this equation right here, super helpful to just know and have that in your back pocket. You know, if you've looked at a lot of RC graphs, you know that that time constant is RC. Um, you get that from doing the full derivation of this equation, but that's something that when you see this kind of decay, you know, we've seen that a few times now, these tau's pop up, and that's what we're looking at there. And for an RC circuit, it is RC. So it's not that bad. Um, we're asked to recreate the circuit uh, with a new kind of format. Um, the switch is now designed in such a way to charge and discharge the capacitor. Um, what we're actually doing up here is this is only charging the capacitor here. So right now we're just charging. You can set this up with the same setup uh, with the same components to charge and discharge the capacitor here. So then we see this is a charging and this is discharging here. Um, how would that schematic diagram look of the RC circuit? So, doo -doo 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 -doo. and we're also looking to measure the voltage across the capacitor of the above plot. So if we wanted to do this, well, let's start with the battery, like always, our EMF source. So there's our battery, there's the positive side. We're going to come out. And then this is where things start getting a little bit tricky and where uh, having a good intuition of how this is going to work out is nice. So I want this sometimes to be the exact same circuit as I had before. So I want this to be a resistor and I want a capacitor in there and I want it to be set up so that I can open and I can close a switch. So that's what we had before. Okay. But I also want it so that sometimes 
this side of the circuit just goes away and it just kind of connects back because now I can discharge that capacitor around. So the way we could do this is do, 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 do. let's put our EMF back in there, our battery. So there's our battery. Let's bring it up. The way we can do this is we can actually bring a line coming down here and here. And this can be our switch. Um, we could put a switch just into this gap right here. What will happen now is that when we close the switch to A, we're going to get the same series circuit that we had before, where we're just going around the loop. When we switch the switch, yeah, switch the switch up to B, though, now we've completely eliminated the left side of this, the EMF, out, because we're going to be stuck within this loop right here. Okay, and that'll be our discharge of the system. So that's what we're looking at there. Now, if we want to get the voltage across the capacitor, we can't forget about that. Well, we just need to drop in a voltmeter. And voltmeters are connected in parallel because you're trying to measure the potential difference on two points of the circuit. So we can just throw in a meter, that's a classic circle, measuring a voltage there. And if we label everything, we've got ourselves our EMF on this side. That's a bad E. There's our EMF, there's a resistor, there's a cap, there's a switch, and there's our voltmeter. Okay, so not that bad. And that's it, kids. That's it. That was a real quick problem. Wow, 2003 was a great year. Basically, uh, can you recognize the tau and the half-life equation? And um, can you draw some circuits? We weren't even asked to do anything else there. So isn't that great? Um, basically, know your RC equations. Um, know what they should look like in the end. Know how to read some graphs. And uh, hopefully you had some time in class where you built some of these circuits and you got to play around with them a little bit and work out these switches. But with that, this problem is uh, it's finished. Take it easy.